Guys, I'm live on Twitch right now and my chat has asked me to make a guide on all of the different statistics a Warlock needs in their builds and what they mean. Now, the problem with making a guide on this is that there are lots of different Warlock builds and each build needs different statistics. You know, they need... Uh, maybe some of them need magical healing, some of them need physical damage, some of them need magical damage. So I thought I would talk about the different builds there are for Warlock, talk about the different kinds of magical damage types, and then talk about what stats you might be looking for so that you can go into the marketplace and kind of craft a build for yourself without me really just showing you the items you need. I'm going to try and teach you to fish rather than give you a fish so you can be you know fed for today so let's talk about magical damage whilst we're here because magical damage is a very misunderstood statistic and so i thought i would break down all the different kinds of magical damage what's best you know because there's so many different kinds right there's there's true there's additional there's will there's magical power what's best here's a little chart right the first thing that's most important is that you have high magical damage. So this is the statistic that is on your spell book, on your magic staff, your casting weapon, essentially. The higher that number is, the more damage you do. That's the most efficient way to get more damage into your build. Second most important statistic, in my opinion, is true magical damage. Uh, true magical damage ignores resistances. So that means that if someone has high magic resistance, then you're going to do more damage to them because you are not having your damage mitigated by those resistances. Thirdly is additional magical damage. Additional magical damage scales your damage exactly the same way that true does. However, uh, resistances will mitigate that damage but additional also will scale off of localization so that's your like multipliers for headshots limbs and stuff sometimes that's good if you hit someone in the head sometimes that's bad if you hit someone in the limb and actually because additional can roll one plus more than true so that's four on a pendant versus three true on a pendant that's at three on a ring versus two true on a ring there is an argument to be made that if you stack a full set of maxed out additional damage versus a target with low magic resistance that additional could be better than true something to keep in mind fourth is will with magical power coming in fifth uh, this actually used to be reversed the reason being is that the random modifiers which is like the blue stat for an item uh, had different values for will and magical power. It used to be that you could get two will on an item and six magical power. And since will equals one magical power, it was a no brainer that magical power was better to a three to one ratio than will on any given item. But they've changed the random modifiers. So now will can stack up to three on an item and magical power is three to five, three being on, you know, gloves, cloak and boots five on your chest and your legs um your spellbooks can still have six magical power but because of that change being very close especially on gloves and boots will is way more efficient because it gives magic resistance and so now i rank will higher than magical power in six we have magic power bonus um so if one will equals one magical power then one will and one magical power equals two percent magical power bonus and that's up to 53 percent then after that, it falls off to 1% magical power bonus up to 63, and then it falls off even higher. So 63 is kind of like the soft cap for magical power bonus. Magical power bonus can stack up to like 10% on certain items, making it very good. But typically, it's just better to go for will magical power on an item because you, are, you need really high rolls of magical power bonus for it to be even considered. And then last is magic penetration, which arguably could be useful against high magic resistance targets, but I don't think it is ever really a statistic that you're ever looking for in a build. There is one more type of magic damage, which is magic weapon damage. This is a statistic found on a crystal sword. It is different to magical damage that you find on staffs and spell books. What it does is it makes your melees do magic damage. Uh, it does not scale anything else. So your blow of corruption, your dark reflection, all your spells, they all scale from magical damage, whereas magic weapon damage only can add magic damage to your melee attack. So keep that in mind when using Crystal Sword that you are losing scaling on your blow of corruption on your dark reflection. That doesn't mean that Crystal Swords are bad. A Crystal Sword melee build is actually very viable because you stack so much magic damage and true magic damage that you melt through people. But it's just an important 
thing to know. Before we move on, I just wanted to kind of give this like information, which is that like one true and one additional magical damage kind of roughly equates to three magical power in its effectiveness, but arguably true is slightly more than three because it has no resistance mitigation. So that's why true and additional is so much more efficient than will and magical power and why you should be focusing on those in your build before anything else if you're trying to get more damage. And you can use this chart, by the way, to figure out physical damage as well. If you just swap out will for strength and the uh, all the magicals for physical, then it's pretty much the same information so hopefully that's really helpful so in a minute what i'm going to do is jump into the marketplace and go through every slot like head boots gloves etc and give three examples of good gear pieces for warlock so you have a general idea of what to build but before we do that i wanted to give you a breakdown of all the different base stats that we're looking for to build our gear sets when we're building magical damage we're aiming for 11 plus true magical damage you can go over 11 if you build a phoenix choker always i feel true is better than additional but you can get up to 16 additional so that's something to keep in mind especially as additional can be slightly cheaper than true and for magical power we're aiming for about 40 percent magical power bonus in the statistics remember that will is greater than magical power typically in this current meta knowledge is extremely important on warlock as it gives greater casting speeds and the faster you can cast, the more damage you can output. So higher knowledge numbers usually equals more damage per second. And of course, you need the memory capacity from knowledge to be able to build the spells you need. Warlock actually starts with minus 23% casting speed. So you need about 24 knowledge minimum if you are building for spells, if you actually want to be able to cast those spells effectively. When I build caster builds such as Curse Lock and Life Drain, I typically go 30 plus though, because I think it's better to have more casting speed if you want more damage output. Movement speed is extremely important. It has always been important in Dark and Darker. The more movement speed you have, the better you, uh, chances of survival you'll have, especially if you're playing a caster warlock as you're going to be kiting people constantly and trying to avoid taking any physical damage. So I typically suggest 310 movement speed as a good base point, but if you're playing caster, I always aim for 320 so that when I have a spell book out, I am moving at 310 in game. So that's really important as a caster. When it comes to the statistics for movement speed, I typically find additional movement speed to be the most effective at giving it to you. I then like to look for agility because agility gives action speed, which can make your melee attacks faster, but it also improves the casting speed as well after you cast something. How fast you actually send the spell out is based on action speed. And then movement speed bonus is really good if you have very high movement speeds already. It's how you can get from like 320 up towards 330 and 340 is movement speed bonuses. But I typically don't focus on them in build unless I'm really going all out on movement speed. When it comes to health, I feel like 120 health is like the minimum point that I feel comfortable. Too little health in the game makes you very squishy as Warlock. It makes you kind of a glass cannon. So more health, the better. Typically add max health and vigor are pretty equal in how they give health at the moment you know you can get three vigor on an item you can get six max health it's basically the same thing strength does give some health as well uh, always avoid max health bonus it's such a bait the only class that can really make good value out of max health bonus is a barbarian because it basically just gives a one-to-one -one ratio because you're not really getting above the 100 mark and you can get way more health from max health or vigor if you're building melee as warlock then i would always recommend you aim for 30 plus dexterity and over 15 percent action speed you should build loads of strength and warlock has so much gear that gives strength such as the occultist pants which are extremely cheap and the shadow hood these are your best in slot items when building melee builds for warlock you can also get true and additional physical damage on your gloves and jewelry but I typically don't recommend you go uh, additional or true physical damage on your jewelry unless you're really just going full out melee BOC phantomize with like a Faustian longsword by Deesh, something like that. If you're going crystal sword or if you want to have high scaling on your blow of corruption, dark reflection and spells, the magical damage from your jewelry and cloak is way more effective. And last but not least, if you have to pick between strength or physical power, I find strength to be more effective than physical power, except for on your chest. 
and your legs because you can get up to five physical power on those slots and you should be building a cultist pants already so you want five physical power on your pants and of course your head slot because the shadow hood is giving strength so you can only get physical power on your head slot and remember the previous section on magical damage types if you just flip everything to physical and swap will for strength then you've got your tier list order of statistics there when building gear so we're building a warlock let's say we're building a magic damage orientated warlock curse lock and life chain are probably the two most popular builds that are orientated off magical damage what stats do we need well it depends on which one we're going for right because if we're going for a curse lock build we need to consider magical healing as the only way to get more health back from torture mastery is to build magical healing whereas if we're going life drain we actually just need to focus on getting as much magic damage as possible into our build and so that means we need as much true magic damage as possible and then we want to up our magical power uh high enough that we can get really good returns from our life drain and we're going to need a casting weapon a spell book is usually the number one casting weapon because it has the fastest action speed on it which means that when you have finished charging your cast it re releases the, the the spell quickest and it also has the lowest movement speed penalty so typically the best place to start is rare rarity because of the uh the price difference and you want to just search for magical power on your book and look for random modifiers the random attribute for six plus magical power here we go this one here six plus magical power it's gone already um six plus magical power is going to be the most efficient way to up your damage on a spell book because six plus magical power in a rare spell book is essentially the same as an epic spell book but epic spell books cost way more now if you are building curse lock you're also going to want to have magical healing on your spell book and this is where things get a little bit pricey because if you want to build magical power and magical healing on your spell book then you're looking at something that costs probably around 700 gold for about yeah five six magical power for three magical healing and these are all two magical healings there we go there's the first so three magical healing and five magical power for 800 gold that's a lot of gold and that's basically going to be the same as if you went to the epic uh, slot and looked for the first three magical uh, the first three magical healing spell book yeah 800 gold they're both exactly the same uh in damage but this one does give regular interaction speed so maybe you want to take this one instead so just search the market based on the that information you'll find what you need but if you don't need magical healing then a rare spell book is always going to be more cost effective than a, a, an epic one unless you're trying to get the most damage possible and then you want to start upgrading epic and even legendary spell books the other magical casting instruments to think about is staff the staff is really good when you're going a life drain build and focusing on blow of corruption over phantomize as your skill because the staff has a base of eight magic damage at the epic variety versus the six magic damage for a spell book so what that means is that you're going to deal more damage with your blow corruption whilst holding the staff and your dark reflection when someone attacks you is also going to do more magic damage so magic stars are really good whenever you're running like a life drain build with blow of corruption specifically last but not least is the crystal ball the crystal ball is extremely good when you want to pair it with a melee weapon right now locks prefer the crease dagger over the falchion to pair it with the reason we go crease dagger over falchion is because the crease dagger has a four attack cycle where it goes slash slash jab twist and that is a quite a fast cycle that can dish out more damage per second than the falchion's one two three combo and so with lower action speed and dexterity a crease dagger is going to be able to do more damage per second and it has a slower move speed penalty so you're actually faster holding a crease dagger than you are holding a falchion so pair it with a crystal ball anything from green crystal ball up is going to be an additional two weapon damage so that means that the uncommon variety is technically as strong as the uh rare variety or the epic variety however the magical damage does increase with each uh variety above uncommon so you're going from four magical damage to six magical damage meaning that your blow corruption or spells if you're using spells with the crystal ball are going to do more damage as well so that's something to keep in mind if you're running blow of corruption or if you're running dark reflection or even curse of pain that the higher rarity uh casting instrument you have here the more magic damage you deal but as far as the additional weapon damage is concerned uncommon enough are exactly the same last but not least is the crystal sword usually used when you run a melee warlock build with blow corruption and phantomize 
The reason the Crystal Sword is good is because it utilizes all of your stats very efficiently. So if you have physical power from strength, then you're going to get really good weapon damage from it. If you have magical damage from your jewelry, then you're going to get really good magic damage on your attacks out of it as well. But keep in mind that the magic weapon damage statistic of a Crystal Sword does not scale anything other than the melee attack that you do with it. It doesn't even scale Blow of Corruption at all. So your Blow of Corruption, your Dark Affections, and your spells, if you decide to use the Crystal Sword to cast, will not have any increases in damage when using the Crystal Sword. The only thing that matters about that is how much magic damage you do per melee attack, which is obviously you want to increase that. So go for higher magic weapon damage where you can. For Warlock, there are really three headpieces that you're going to consider. And this is the reason to consider them. The Shadow Mask is really good if you want to have the highest movement speed possible. It has no movement speed penalty. And at an epic value, it has 3 plus agility. Meaning it's giving you 3 plus movement speed. So the Shadow Mask is going to allow you to be as fast as possible. It also gives some dexterity and strength as well. And a tiny amount of armor rating. But it has no headshot damage reduction. So it is usually best used on caster warlocks who are trying to be as fast as possible and are going to kite damage and avoid being attacked at all with physical damaging weapons. So uh, I would normally go a Shadow Mask on a Curse Warlock or a Life Drain Warlock if I am intending to always play from the back line and never get hit by anything. The Occultist Hood is only good if you're considering running a Curse Lock build and you want to increase your magical healing by more. However, I personally do not recommend an Occultist Hood over a Shadow Mask because movement speed is imperative when running Torture Mastery. And I think that the Occultist Hood's minus four movement speed penalty over the actual plus three movement speed you can get from a, an epic Shadow Mask is, uh, is not a good trade-off. So I typically build my magical healing using other pieces of equipment and not the Occultist Hood. Last but not least is the Shadow Hood, which gives plus five strength. It has magic resistance, it has armor rating, and it has headshot damage reduction. This is the perfect piece of uh, equipment if you are going melee as a warlock, as it's going to give you more protection to headshots, which are more likely going to happen to you since you're in melee range, and it's giving you strength, which is more physical power as well. So I would always run a Shadow Hood when going for a melee build as it's going to give me the most survivability and it's also giving really desirable stats as well. Keep in mind that your headpiece can allow you to build true and additional magical damage on them up to two for true and three for additional. So it is always a good idea as a Warlock to be buying one that has two true or three additional magical damage on it as that's going to scale your uh, Dark Reflection, which most builds will run. Uh, also your Blow of Corruption, if you're running that, and any of your spells are going to scale from that additional magical or true magical damage as well. So usually the main stat you're looking for on any headpiece is two true or three additional magical damage. Let's talk about my favorite chess piece for Warlock, the Occultus Robe. It has really high armor rating. It has 50 magic resistance and it gives vigor so that is a lot of health as well at only a five movement speed penalty. It is probably the best chess piece in the game and only Warlocks can use it. And the community hates that, so these are ultra expensive always. I mean, just one that has two plus attributes is going to be 1750 on the market. And that is going to be often the best in slot that you can get in a chess piece for any build. If you're going melee orientated though, then the frock is a really good alternative as it gives plus five dexterity, which increases your attack speed. Um, so you can get more attacks in. And they're much cheaper when you're going for plus two or attributes as well. 600 gold as an alternative to the occultist robe. And the magic resistance is 25 with the armor rating being pretty good as well. So it's half the magic resistance, no extra health, but really good stats nonetheless. Last but not least is the Oracle Robe, which is an incredible choice for casters as it gives knowledge. And you can see here that a plus two or Oracle Robe, the cheapest you're gonna get that for is 1600. These are ultra competitive because wizards also want the Oracle Robe and some clerics as well. So they give really good knowledge. They give magic resistance at 25, armor rating really high. It really comes down to what you prefer as your main stat. Do you want health from the Vigor? Do you want dexterity from the Frock? Or do you want knowledge from the Oracle Robe? Well, you're going to have to make your choice based on your build. 
but those are the three chess pieces I recommend and I always recommend that you try and get one or two or attributes when it is available to you. So if you're focusing on your movement speed, then the loose trouser is the number one choice for movement speed. You can get loose trousers with additional movement speed up to five for very cheap at the rare value. Like look, 233 gold, that's going to be six movement speed to your build as the agility is four giving you plus one movement speed after the movement speed penalty, plus five, yeah, six. So that's really good and it's quite affordable. Um, however, with an all attributes meta, you're likely wanting the all attributes as well. And so that's when it can get a bit more pricey, but all attributes on a rare version of the loose trousers is usually pretty affordable. 470 gold, that's gonna give you a lot of movement speed and the all attributes is gonna give you everything else you want as well. I'm almost hesitant to talk about the occultist pants because they are the best kept secret in dark and darker. They give strength and they have a movement penalty of minus six. So uh, movement speed, not as good as the loose trousers, but that strength attribute is going to increase your melee damage massively. With a shadow hood and a cultist pants, you only need a little bit more additional physical damage or power to really hit hard with a melee build. And you can actually focus on magical damage on your jewelry, your cloak, your headpiece as well, if you want to, um, and have a real hybrid split of magical damage and physical damage with Occultist Pants and Shadow Hood as your main two pieces. Uh, they're extremely affordable. The first plus all attributes, two plus all attributes Occultist Pants at rare is 150 gold. And if you want to, getting epic for plus two all is pretty cheap as well. They're not too bank breaking at 400 and 18. If you can get health on these, additional movement speed, or even physical power, then you're basically laughing your way to the bank because they are very efficient at giving you the stats you need. Last but not least are the leather chalices. If you're going a caster oriented build as they give knowledge and they have only a minus five movement speed penalty, the first uh, plus two all attributes rare version you can get right now is about a 425 gold. They're extremely efficient if knowledge is your main concern. Keep in mind, knowledge increases your casting speed. It gives you more memory capacity. And if you're running a life drain warlock, then you are going to need more knowledge to get your heal from the life drain quicker as you can cast uh, life drain twice onto a single hydra when you have about 33 plus knowledge. And that's going to make sure that you're healing quickly in a team fight. So more knowledge is power when you're running life drain uh, and any caster build. So if you need more knowledge, the leather chalices are there as your third option for the leg pieces. If you're going a magical healing curse lock build, then the best gloves you can build are mystic gloves. You always wanna build these at a epic value as epic value mystic gloves have three magical healing at its base stat versus the two of a rare version and for only 149 gold you can get three magical healing into your kit it's extremely affordable and you can start looking for random modifiers such as health agility or knowledge that are going to help finish your torture mastery build based on what you need if you want to have more health in your build then go for the reinforced gloves as they give five vigor at epic variety and are very affordable uh, if you are looking for more health, then probably what you are also doing is playing melee at this point. And so you might consider getting additional or true physical damage on these gloves. You can also double stack health, five vigor, four max health, extremely tanky at that point. So there's a lot of options for the random modifiers at the reinforced glove level. And it's their best option if you need to fit more health into your build. Leather gloves are really efficient if you're playing a melee warlock as they give dexterity, which is incredibly useful for the action speed, especially when using a crease dagger or a falchion or even a long sword. It's really important that you have high dexterity and the leather gloves give it to you. Uh, for the random modifiers, look for additional or true physical damage, look for health and look for agi. Or if you need more knowledge, then usually you can get plus three knowledge on these for pretty cheap as well. The other good thing about leather gloves is they're giving three will. So that's a lot of magic resistance that you're getting from them, as well as uh, six magical power per percentage uh, towards your build as well, increasing your dark reflection, your blow corruption, and your uh, spell damage as well. Right now, I do not recommend that you build roll high gloves. The secondary stat of resourcefulness is incredibly unnecessary in most instances. And at an epic variety, you're getting four knowledge 
versus any other pair of gloves can have plus three knowledge rolled on the random modifier. So I just think it's really inefficient currently to build rawhide gloves as they don't really offer you that much more than any other pair of gloves can offer you. So uh, unless you're running super budget, rawhide gloves are probably not the one. Caster Warlocks are going to probably prefer Occultist Boots because they give knowledge and will, making them incredibly efficient at what they do. You need both of those stats to do more damage. Uh, knowledge, faster casting speed uh, means more damage. Will, just more damage in general. Uh, look for additional movement speed on these as they're one of the few things that you can actually get additional movement speed on. So five additional movement speed is going to put you back about 800 gold at the epic variety so maybe look at the rare variety if you're going a little bit more budget as you're going to get only three knowledge versus the four but at a fraction of the price for five additional movement speed however if movement speed is your greatest priority then you cannot go wrong with the lace turn shoes it gives four agility which increases your action speed really good if you're playing a melee class or even just a caster class and you can get five additional movement speed on top of that so these boots here are six plus four plus five equal 15 movement speed an epic variety is going to be at 16 movement speed and they give uh, more armor rating than light foots do so they're typically way better as far as value are concerned because the agility equals action speed and the armor rating means more tankiness equally if health is your only concern then the rugged boots are the best for that because they give vigor they give really good armor rating as well so they make you way more tanky and you can get five movement speed on a rare variety of rugged boots for incredibly cheap 300 gold it's really good if health is what you need last but not least is the cloak choice and the the game currently makes it so that a rare variety cloak is plus two of the main attribute, epic is plus three, legendary is plus four, and unique is plus five. Meaning that if you're going budget, you're probably building a rare variety cloak for only plus two of that attribute, meaning actually it doesn't really matter which cloak you go. So think about the random attribute you want the most from the cloak. Are you going true magical damage or are you going true physical damage or additional? And then search for a cheapest version of that. And that's usually going to be the most budget efficient way to get what you need into your build because two true magical damage is usually better than, you know, the plus two knowledge or the plus two vigor or the plus two strength that you can get from something. That's going to be more efficient in scaling your build. Obviously, with more money, go for a Radiant Cloak if you want that knowledge. I'm not saying don't. I just think that currently the two true that you can get from something is more efficient than necessarily the plus two knowledge you can get from a cloak. For almost every Warlock build, you're going to focus on magical damage jewelry over physical damage jewelry. The only builds that you focus on physical damage jewelry for Warlock is a Blow of Corruption Phantomized build because all of your damage is going to be mostly physical damage. So you want as much physical damage as possible. But almost every other build utilizes a lot of magical damage in it from curses, from Blow of Corruption, from Dark Reflection, and so it is usually a good thing to have more magic damage in your build. So for jewelry, we look at magic damage. So for that reason, a Phoenix Choker with plus two or attributes is usually the most efficient way to get stats you need into your build. Plus two or is giving you every other stat, base stat, which is good, and you're getting two true magic damage as well. So that buffs your blow corruptions, your dark reflections, your spells. That's a really efficient piece of gear. When it comes to rings, you could just go plus all attributes on your ring and try and get whatever the cheapest is. And that's usually a fairly efficient way to build. Uh, but the other things to keep in mind is that rings can have plus two true magical damage on it. Uh, so that means that if you can get two true ma uh, magical damage on it, you're gonna do more damage overall. The plus one all attributes is actually probably better spent on your like top of the shelf builds, your most expensive builds. So I would normally look for two true magical damage on my rings uh, before anything else, as that's going to give me the most damage possible in my build. Uh, and you can search for just true magical damage if you want to and get it pretty cheap. Here's a dex ring with two true magical damage. That's amazing, especially if you're building a hybrid build, which focuses on both magical damage and physical damage, because that dexterity is increasing your action speed as well. So that's a very efficient ring right there. But if you're building just caster, then caster builds, I typically go for ring of quicknesses as they give movement speed as their main stat line through the agility. So that makes you super fast. And you can usually buy these around 500 to 600 gold with two true magic damage on them. Equally, if you need more knowledge, then you have the ring of wisdom. They are usually more expensive though. So keep that in mind that you are paying more money 
for a ring of wisdom usually than a ring of quickness and i would consider trying to find knowledge as a random modifier first as i think it's usually cheaper okay so here's an example torture mastery build uh i've put this together pretty quickly because i didn't really want to like hard focus getting the best items possible i just wanted to have like relatively good items so we've gone for a five magical power three magical healing spell book at the rare variety uh, we've gone for a shadow mask with two true magic damage on it at the epic variety we've got ourselves a phoenix choker with three magical healing on it and since it's epic it is three true magical damage as well we've gone for mystic gloves which have uh, both knowledge and max health on them making them very good we've gone for the cheapest occultist robe with plus two or so we can have as many stats as possible as well as that really big magic resistance and armor rating uh, i've actually gone for movement speed orientated loose trousers with three plus knowledge on them lace turn shoes are basically move speed health and knowledge a bit like the gloves um, and then i've gone for two true magic damage on both my knowledge rings so you can see stats wise i have 28 knowledge giving me 25 percent casting speed i have 318 move speed and i've maxed out my true magic damage across the board so my cursors are going to be hitting for about 31 now the only downside with this build is that torture mastery requires you to think about so many different elements that it's actually quite hard to get magic power bonus into the build so we're going to be hitting for about 30 to 31 curse damage with this build and if we were able to up our magic power bonus then then we could get that you know 32 33 34 35 36 however really if i'm hitting three curses four curses onto uh, most targets i'm going to kill them so it's probably not uh, super necessary now there's an alternative uh, piece of jewelry that i would like to bring to your attention it's the bear pendant the bear pendant will give you more health so you can see that a two bear pendant is giving me three health and it costs basically the same as like an epic phoenix choker with three magical healing to get three plus three magical damage so something to consider when your health is starting to look a little bit low like mine has i haven't been able to fit all the stats i want into this build and so the bear pendant is going to help make up for that a little bit okay but let's say we want to go life drain caster warlock instead of curse caster warlock what we're going to switch out is the gloves as we don't need the magical healing on them so i've gone for a three will reinforced with some health and action speed on them um, keep in mind gloves can only roll up to three magical power so actually that's when wheel becomes slightly more efficient than magical power i've gone for a spell book which costs the exact same as this one here uh, it's, it's an epic variety it has health and magic power on it and magic penetration and i've got myself a plus two or phoenix choker as well so my movement speed is really good now i've got 123 health my color casting speed has gone up as well with this build um, so it's just generally exactly the same as a magical healing warlock build um as far as like your stat priorities you're just dropping the magical healing out of the build so that allows you to spend maybe a little bit more gold on getting like a better spell book for example or gloves that give more health uh etc or, or you know plus all attributes choker and that's how you would build the two different cast of warlocks is going for uh as much health as much knowledge as much true magical damage and as much movement speed as possible the difference being that one needs like nine magical healing and the other doesn't okay so here's a good example of a crease dagger crystal ball warlock build as you can see we've gone for that shadow hood and occultist pants here to get our strength up we've also gone for a tattered cloak to get our strength up and we've put some additional magic damage on that still rocking the true magical damage uh, jewelry plus two all on the phoenix choker plus one additional and dexterity we've got a wisdom ring here which we could switch out for any other uh, magical damage uh ring maybe a strength ring a vitality ring would be good or another dexterity ring and basically the point of this build is that our dark reflection and blow of corruption is going to hit mega hard since we have so much true magic damage in our build additional magic damage in our build a large damaging crystal ball um but also our physical damage is going to be really high thanks to the shadow hood the coldest pant and the tatter cloak and our gloves which have two true physical damage on them as well so this is a fantastic example of gear that looks it, that is quite hybrid so if you want hybrid damage in your build maybe ignoring the crystal ball and the crease dagger altogether then this gear set here is really good hybrid damage where you're going to have really good magical damage and you're going to have really good physical damage as well and when it comes to a build like this if you want to go pure physical damage then all you're switching out is your three jewelry pieces and your cloak 
to make them have uh, additional or true physical damage instead and then you're going to be right as rain. So hopefully that helps you with building a warlock and gives you plenty of examples of gear to build and when to build specific statistics. Obviously, the point of this guide was not to give you the outright specific thing that you need to buy, but give you all of the information so you can go and craft sets that are going to fit your specific situations. The beauty of Warlock is that it's one of the most versatile classes in the game with so many different play styles and different build styles as well. And so hopefully with this information, you're well equipped to go out there and dominate the dungeons. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one.